Okay, so uh, before I posted a, a video called Reasons Why I Believe in God, and I wanted to kind of build on that. Um, it's important to kind of analyze the existence of truth. So in any argument, there will not be a 100% proof. There will always be, think of it as percentages. There will always be room for doubt. But you're trying to find what is probability, what, what is the probability of this view being being correct and this one being not correct. If you honestly look at the argument itself, it will always be an issue of 70-30, 90-10, 99-1, but it will never be 100-0. Never. And if it is 100-0, the problem is you. Any time that you are 100% convinced of your view and 0% convinced of their view, the issue is more with your bias, your prejudgment, your inability to think outside your own self. Well, I have already decided that there can't, that there's no proof for God, and there can be no proof for God because I don't believe that there's a God. What? So I mean, that shows more of your own hangup. And I'm not just saying uh, anti-religious people do. Religious people do this too. Um, so okay, I am convinced in God. Therefore, uh, He is real. Therefore, the fact that I believe in Him is proof that I believe in Him. What? See what I mean? Now I, I, I'm I'm obvious I, I'm I'm not trying to belittle anybody. I, I'm I'm trying to point out that whenever you are looking for actual proof and truth on something, you're dealing with probabilities. So if you're looking for someone to completely 100% satisfy the doubts, it's not going to happen. If you are a Christian who is genuinely um, uh, well, if, you, if you're a Christian, you will have things that, that, that bother you. Like, for instance, you can believe the truth of, you know, Jesus being saved through Jesus. Okay, all right. And then still struggle with, like, but God, you did this. Like, one of the big things that, that I have had struggles with is, um, okay, God says that children shouldn't be punished for the um, sins of the father, that each person should die for their own sins, right? Okay, all right. And then you run into the issue of children being killed when the Israelites went into Canaan. Why didn't God allow them to adopt or spare or whatever? Um, see what I mean? And I know that there were things that were done for our example and, and things that, you know, all those things. I know all kinds of things about, about the Holy War. I know that. I know that. But it still bothers me, and it's still something that I wrestle with. And it's, some, it's, one, it's hard because it's one of those things that really isn't answered a whole lot in literature. How can God be just if he commanded his people to murder children? And why did the children have to die for their parents' wickedness when the Bible says that – see what I mean? And, and there, there's just a lot, of, a lot of problems I have with that on a, on a personal level. And then it says things like, you know, okay, so, so we know that God has, has right, veto right, if you will, about who lives and who dies. Absolutely. Okay. But then he still used people, Israel, to accomplish his will – of killing children, and and that's that's a hard thing, and and it's something that I wrestle with. So I I, I want to go into this with that understanding of, of truth. Yes, truth is not relative. That's just just obvious. And if you believe the truth is relative, really, honestly, th there's going to be a problem right there, because I believe that things can be can be knowable. I am a white male. Um, it is daytime. Um. The earth goes around the sun. I mean, these are things that I can know. Truth is, is, is knowable. It, it's not relative. It's not what I decided to be. Uh, morals um, are absolute. The, there are some things that are gray areas, some things that are right, and some situations are wrong in others. For instance, lying. 
um, lying is wrong if you are manipulating somebody, if you are hurting somebody, etc. But if you are lying for the purpose of saving somebody, then it's not really wrong. I'll give you some examples. Um, uh, Corey Ten Boom and people who well, I can't really think of any lies specifically. Oh, yeah, no, I, I can think of lies that, she, that they said. You know, lies about hiding Jews, for instance. Um, was that wrong to lie? Well, no, because it was for the sake of saving people. Or like, for instance, in the book of Exodus, where they say, okay, um, and they lie to the Pharaoh about killing the babies because they didn't want to kill the babies. I mean, thank goodness sakes, right? And then there's the issue of the prophet, who the king told the prophet to lie, and I believe it was Jeremiah, and then he lies like the king told him to. And it was for a reason, absolutely, but my point being... So there are sometimes, yes, there, there's absolute standards with morality, but then there are sometimes that it's gray areas, and then there's sometimes that it's not that right becomes wrong, but in some situations something is wrong when it, when it isn't. It's called situational ethics, if, if that's the term that you're looking for, um, or if the, that you know, I should say. Um, and and there, are, there are definitely some times when situational ethics uh, comes into play, and um, that, that, that is a thing. So, with all this being said, there will always be rebuttals. But the question is, is there a probability of this being true? Is it worth considering? Or is it not worth considering? Now, in the last one, I looked mostly at things that I believed were proofs of God from, from nature and those kinds of things. And I want to take a little bit of a different route and um, a little more of a recent route in my own life. Uh, first off... Um, this to me is a big deal. Whoops, sorry, Eeps. sorry about that. Uh, this to me is a, is a big deal. Um, as a Christian, I do still feel fear. I do still struggle with anxiety and with depression and, and all kinds of things. Um, I do still have struggles, but I'm not overcome by fear. And I'll give you a couple examples. First off, the coronavirus is happening. People are freaking out. People are really scared, and I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not, deni I'm not denying the facts. I'm not calling it a conspiracy. I'm not denying it. I am not saying that, you know, whatever. Um, I do think that it's a little bit overhyped um, in the media. I think that it, um, the actual death toll doesn't warrant the hysteria that people are showing. Um, I think that closing down the entire world's economy is probably not the best idea, especially be in light of, well, just seems to me like it'll make things worse in the future that we should work on immunity rather than but i mean i don't know that's i guess that's a conversation for another day but the moral of the story being i don't deny the facts i'm just not scared of them my my future's assured see i'm not so hell-bent on it seems like some people they don't care if they have a good quality of life they just want longevity they just want to have a long life even if it's a terrible life, even if they are captivated in fear, they would rather that than live a short but good life. I don't know how long I'm going to live. it. The truth is that life is very unsure. It's very uncertain. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, some of us might have cancer right now at this time, at this moment, and not even know that we have cancer. That's kind of a big deal. But I have peace in the midst of coronavirus, not because, oh, I don't think I'll get it. That, that's not the issue. The issue is I, I know who holds my tomorrow. I, I'm assured of my future. I, I'm assured of what will come after death. And then also I have a sense of purpose before death. I have a sense of what my mission is in life, encouraging people. Helping people to, you know, who are suicidal and those kinds of things, um, showing them a little bit of, uh, a little bit of hope. Uh, hopefully, showing a glimpse of, of God. Hopefully, and having a sense of purpose makes it worth it. Like there's some doctors, for instance, who will go into war-torn countries and those kinds of things, and their vision for those people will be so big that it'll outweigh the caution that says, "Hey, don't go." And that's exactly what I'm saying. It's not that I have a denial of the facts. You know, and if I sit here and just remove God from the situation and just sit around watching news all day, I bet you I will be terrified. But I'm not. And 
I've learned to trust in God, and I've learned that, here's the thing, I should have died multiple times, and I didn't. That tells me, especially the situations that, um, that God is watching out for me, and whenever it's his time for me to go, then it's my time to go. And here's something that's very alarming, but it's true. You can't outrun death. You can't. Uh, it comes for all of us, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can spend your life in fear, running from it, hoping that maybe somehow science will save the day. And Without God, though, that's just kind of a pointless endeavor anyways, so we can live forever in a meaningless existence, while we slowly deplete the resources of the planet that we're on, and eventually see more and more of wildlife die. Okay. Doesn't seem to have any point to it. Life just kind of gets to be kind of monotonous without God. There, there's... So you have sex, and okay, that's fun, and then... What now? Okay, so you try and have sex with as hot of a chick as you can possibly have sex with, and then what? You try and get stronger and try to be healthy, and, and you work your whole life around getting in shape, but then age comes for you anyways. Or you get cancer. And this isn't, I wasn't supposed to get cancer. This is other people who get cancer. The fat people, the unimportant people. I'm important. I've taken care of my body. And it's like, well, you can't run from it. There, there are some things that just, they just happen. And I have, you know, peace and coronavirus. Now, this might seem not seem like a big deal. How is that proof of God? Because it doesn't make sense that I should have proof. By all rights, I should be freaking out like everybody else. I have anxiety issues. I really should be freaking out. But there's a, a peace that didn't come from me. There's a peace that I get when I'm reading the Bible. There's a peace that I get when I'm in prayer. There's a peace that I feel throughout my life when, some, when I get bad news. And it's just like a voice. Um, a feeling like a hand in my heart. They just, it's okay. It's all right. And you don't know how many times that thing, is, the, the thing has carried me. Through the death of my child. Through the death of my high school friend. Through sickness. Through despair. Through all kinds of situations. Through betrayal. I mean, we're talking about all kinds of things that, that should have ended me. Especially because I was suicidal in high school. And here I am still alive and still having hope how should why should i have hope in the midst of such hopeless situations especially if my life has no meaning except to evolve in which case i ought to die and get out of the way um there was the whole there's a whole thing going on right, right now with the murder hornets it's not that i'm denying the facts or just ignoring them it's that i have hope that carries me through Regardless of what happens with the murder hornets. And another thing is I've learned not to live in tomorrow or yesterday. I've learned, learned to live in today. Why? Because that's that's what the Bible teaches me. And it ha it's, it's real world application. It's really helped me here now. There's a whole World War III scare that was happening. I know that I'm where God wants me to be. I know that I'm living where he wants me to be. And I'm doing what he wants me to, wants me to do. I hope I said that right. If, if not, you know what I meant to say. And these are things that go beyond the facts of the situation. Then there's there's multiple times that prayers have been answered. And I'm not talking about things like... Well, I can't think of anything now like... Um, God help me to have a child. Well, I'm a healthy male and my wife was a healthy female, so... It's a natural process. Childbirth is a natural process. Um, I'm not saying that everybody has doesn't. I'm not saying that nobody has difficulties having children. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that children don't die. I'm, I I lost a child. I, I understand those things. But the prayers that I'm specifically talking about are things that shouldn't have happened. In 2012, I had a, a serious gastrointestinal infection. Um, it was very extensive, um, very painful recovery. Um, I almost died. They said my organs were shutting down. Um, that I was on the brink of death. They couldn't. Ex they couldn't understand 
I'm sorry. My or organs were not shutting down. I, I said that wrong. Sorry. They said they didn't understand why my organs had not shut down. Sorry. I misspoke. Everything else I, I meant to say, but that part I, I misspoke. Um, they, they couldn't explain why. They didn't understand why. Um, I should have died. I was really at death's door, but yet for some reason, my body didn't just stop. Now, you could say, oh, well, you know, that just did, 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 did. No, 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 no. You had to have been there. I am scared to death of doctors. I would not go. I had this idea that I'm just going to die instead, and I kept getting worse and worse and worse. Still wouldn't go. Then people started praying for me, and my situation didn't get worse or didn't get didn't get better. Didn't get better. But even as it was getting, as it was still like really at, at at death's door, I still had, I still had enough to not, die, to wake up again. Which once again, they didn't they didn't they didn't know that why that was. I was really really skinny. Um, in fact, my mom, who takes the pictures for everything, um, refused to take pictures because she thought I was gonna die and. She didn't want that to be the way she didn't want to remember me like that. So how how sad is that? Um, but anyways, this this very very intense uh, gastrointestinal infection. I couldn't explain it, and I get there and at first they didn't even know what it was and how I made it that long and those kinds of things. So they they start they start treating me and I get better. And you might say, well, science saved you. Well, does God can God not use people to accomplish His thing, His His purposes? Can God not use people? And you say, well, yeah, of course He can use people, but you know, whatever. Okay, well, here here's another issue. I had a I had a bleeding issue, and nothing was helping. Uh, and then I prayed and I and I asked God. I said, you know, God. I can't get to the doctor right now because of the whole coronavirus thing, and it's a whole. There's a whole thing there that I don't want to get into, but um, and I said, look, I I know you can heal me if you would just if you just be willing to, if you would just do it. I know you can, and you know I don't. The prayers aren't about having the perfect prayers or anything like that. They're not about saying all the right things, going through all the right moves. But I simply talk to God beyond the whole the religiosity. Sometimes we, we we try and we try and sugarcoat things for God. Like if I talk in such a way, then it will impress God to answer all my prayers. And okay. Anyways, it it wasn't like that. It was me talking to God in, in just a heartfelt way. And that same day, I started to get better. That same day. An unexplained recovery. Then, over the course of that week and into the next week, I recovered 100%, where whatever was causing the issue was gone. Completely within a week and a half. Within a week, week and a half. That's, that, that's not nothing. There's a, a lot of times that people do well. Well, do, do, do. well, here's another example. The other associate pastor, kidney failure, level whatever the 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 level five or you know the the big one, the 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 no coming back from thing. He's now back to I think stage three after years of having dialysis, which doesn't happen. And he barely even I think it's stage three. I I, I get the stages confused. You you have to excuse my ignorance. But moral of the story being his kidney, which was completely failed, not working, talking about a kidney transplant, just randomly started working again as we prayed. And he barely needs the dialysis machine at all. And if he continues to get better, he might, there might come a day when he doesn't even need dialysis. But either way, even if he doesn't get a full healing, that's still worth something. I mean... <laughs> How if we say the only way it can count as God answering prayers is if it, when it's immediate and complete? Why? Why can God not do some other way? My great grandpa, he had tumors in his brain and cancer. One of them got healed completely. There was no trace of it left in his body. The other one killed him. Why would God have let have say have healed one part and left? I don't know. 
this is once again I don't understand everything that God says or does I, I, I don't know but what I do know is that I prayed and the thing that I prayed to answered me. When's the last time you've prayed towards somebody, some, some to something or anything, and it has answered something that was beyond your control? These things don't just happen. And the thing is, not just healings. There's been other things that have happened where I where I prayed for the for this thing, and God just brought a supernatural thing that couldn't have happened. It was just an impossible situation that God worked out. Excuse me. And these are things that you can't just dismiss. Once again, the whole probability thing. Yes, okay. So maybe you're not the first one to jump on. Maybe you have your rebuttals. I, I get that. But is it worth considering? Now, if you once again have that idea that it's 0% worth considering, well, then you've already decided truth. And it doesn't matter what truth actually is. Truth is now only what you imagine truth is. So the conversation is kind of moot at this point. You shouldn't even be watching this video. You've already decided, you know, um, that it, it can't be. Which, honestly, a couple years ago, I could, I probably would have said the same thing. Kidneys don't just start working. Uh, bleeding issues that severe don't just stop. Um, especially to the stage that it had gotten. GI infections to that limit, they you you die from them. You you die from them. Your your organs start shutting down. You you die. And, you know, then there were no long-term effects from that GI infection, and they couldn't explain why. They didn't understand why. They just said, well, we don't know why, but you seem fine, so we're just going to go ahead and say the case is closed. So then my doctor said, well, I don't like that. Let's do some tests. Let, let, let's, just, let's just see what, see if we can find any reason as to, as to why, any physical reason as to why. And we were paying everything out of pocket, so we said, <laughs> I'm um, sorry, no. So unfortunately, that is where that story ends. But still, and then this is not uh, the. I'm not the only person in the world that has experienced answered prayers. So that's something else worth considering too. Um, I'm not the only person who has had overwhelming uh, uh, faith, ever overwhelming peace, overwhelming in the midst of tragedy. I'm not the only person that that's happened for. Um, Peace, comfort, direction, and struggles like depression. You know, some people think that it can only be God as if he, if he removes the, you from the problem, where you don't struggle with it at all. That's just such a limited idea. I just don't agree with it at all. Um, there are many t times where God, even in the Bible, where he won't take away the problem, he'll go with you through the problem. You know, you have Noah, where... He was in a flood, a very scary situation that he couldn't just leave, and yet God was with him in it. You have the disciples who are in this scary boat in, in a storm. They think they're going to die, and then God was just with them in it. And yeah, that time he did calm the storm. But what about Daniel when he when he was thrown into the lion's den, where he was in a, in a very bad situation politically, and then he was in a lion's den, which was really bad, and then he was brought out without any harm and you know obviously there's this idea of oh those are all invented stories but here's the thing besides what else could be said you can't have people witness an event and then relay that event to other people and just simply discredit it that's not history that's not um, wisdom that's not reason that's just simply bias Okay, so you have observed something in a telescope in space. I don't believe you. I think you're lying. Okay, um, we know that uh, we know there was an emperor named Nero. Okay, Emperor Nero. I don't believe that Emperor Nero ever existed. Okay, that's an idea. <laughs> When things are, are with, with, without understanding, things that are, are, are beyond, and I mean, we're not even talking about supernatural events in general. Haunted houses, which once again, there's fake things, absolutely, but that doesn't mean that every single thing is fake. Um, yeah, there's so many things that I could go on, but when, when, when you get peace, comfort, direction, and struggles, you, you know what it's like to live life with direction and with purpose? 
not to live it for the sake of entertainment or to live it for the sake of rising a ladder in your job, but for an underlying purpose where most people live their life in just a days, and then they kind of just have enter entertainments and distractions to keep them from how shallow their life is and from how unhappy that they are. But with with God, I don't need that. I don't need distractions. I'm content. I believe in what I do know and have experienced versus the people who make fun of me for my beliefs, like the atheists, who argue against what they don't know and what they haven't experienced. I'm not talking down to agnostics or atheists. I am saying a simple fact. They are arguing against me. No, God is not real, based on something that they don't know and haven't experienced. I don't believe in this. I haven't experienced this. But I'm arguing for something I have experienced. Let's say, for instance, I'm talking to a group of barbarians, people who don't have doctors, for instance. And I say, hey, I went to the doctor. They were able to figure out why uh, why my tooth hurt or why my side hurt, and they were able to fix it. And I tell them that, and they say, um, we don't believe that there are doctors, and we don't believe that the doctors could do that. Okay, but I'm telling you something that I've experienced. You're telling, you're arguing and trying to disprove what I'm saying by something that you haven't experienced. Obviously, experience doesn't decide truth. I understand that. Feelings don't decide reality. I, I get all that. But also, you can't just dismiss things without any reason or proof or whatever. And you say, well, there's no proof of God. But if someone claims to have experienced something, you have to take that case by itself and account for it in some way. A good example of this would be Jesus. They saw him die. Everybody was very sure that they were that he was dead. And then they saw him afterwards alive. He they saw the holes in his hand. Hands. The tomb is still empty. There is no grave where the Jews never said, hey, by the way, here's the body. The Romans never said, hey, by the way, here's the body. And, they, and the believers themselves, they died. Why would you die for something that you know is a lie? Why would everybody die for something? Now, there obviously, there, there were people who um, shied away from being killed. I'm not trying to say that. But nobody said... This is a lie that we made up. I don't want to die. See what I mean? Maybe they got cold feet. Maybe their faith wasn't um, that strong. I don't know. But there, there was nobody who said, oh, yes, you're about to kill me. Here's the thing. Please don't kill me. It was just a lie we made up. There's no record of that. See, we are arguing something as Christians that we do know and something we have experienced. So when you're arguing, no, that can't be real. Because I don't know, and I haven't experienced, that's kind of a shallow argument. There has to be some kind of reason for, okay, supernatural can't exist. Why can I deny it? Why? Because it's it's just a, 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 a uh, primitive belief. Okay, why do you think that? So if you can't just write things off as true or not true based on your own bias and reasoning and then say that that's somehow substantial when you then claim that other people like they're religious are doing something for their own bigoted reasons, that just doesn't follow. You have to hold yourself to the same, to the same standard. Um, you have moral dilemmas being resolved. Why is there this tug in all of us for morality if we are all evolved or if there is no God or whatever? Life purpose besides just living. Some people go through life as though the purpose of life is just to live quickly and then die. That's a pretty pointless existence. But with God, there's something more than that. There's comfort and peace that surpasses my understanding. That doesn't make sense. I had the death of a child. I grieved. But eventually I... Let him go. And besides that, 
I don't have a hole in my heart where he was. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. See, when I was a kid, I heard about God. But now that I'm a man, I, I've seen it for myself. Did you know that if you lose a child, you don't have to live in constant grief and despair? Did you know that? Many people don't know that. Did you know that if you have anxiety and depression, you don't have to live in a, in a state of, of wanting to just kill yourself to be free of your own mind? You can have hope? Did you know that? D did you know that, that if you get sick, there is a God who can heal? Now, I'm not saying he always does. And I don't know why he answers some prayers but not others. I don't know. But I know he's not a piggy, a piggy, uh, piggy bank um, machine, slot machine. Eh, whatever, whatever. Uh, I know that he doesn't give me based on me putting money in. I can now withdraw money. Whatever you want to say there. Um, jukebox? I put in the money and he plays the song? I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, anyways, uh, th then there's the communion with God where, where there's sometimes that, that I hear something talk to me in my heart. And it's something that I can't really explain. And I've experienced things that I can't really necessarily explain. But there's no explanation um, that can be given. I have had bad experience with the religious people before. I, I get that. And here's the thing. Jesus did too. He was killed by religious people. But I've had bad experiences with lots of people. That doesn't mean truth is relative, and it doesn't mean that God isn't real. I want to encourage you, you know, if you've had a bad experience with, with religious people, okay, well, still, that doesn't mean you should give up on God. Doing life with close friends who have the same goal only works with a guiding theme. Now, you might have one or two friend, friends, but I have a whole community called the church, and we're there for each other, and here's the thing. That self-sacrifice doesn't come naturally. When someone pisses me off, it makes more sense that I should avenge myself, that I should stick up for myself, not that I should put this person before myself. When somebody is offended about something, it doesn't make sense that I should put myself below them and so, so as to not offend them. That, that doesn't make sense. That's not the way we naturally live life. And uh, it's a better way of doing life. I will say that. So I know that none of these one things are going to convince you. Um, I know that. But all that I'm asking is that you allow for the possibility that God could exist. And then ask, himself, ask him to make himself real to you and read the Bible and see what happens. Now, here's the thing. If you say, God, I will only believe in you if you do what I'm asking you to, don't expect God to answer you. God, you have to heal my sick mother. God, you have to make me immortal. Everybody dies. and that, That's hard. And I'm not denying that, but it's true. Everybody dies. But wouldn't you like to have peace in your life? Wouldn't you like to have comfort? Wouldn't you like to have hope? Hope that surpasses understanding? That doesn't make sense? Wouldn't you, don't, don't you just want something supernatural to happen in your life? Something that you know what's going to happen in this situation and the next situation and all the gloom and despair that goes along with that. Wouldn't you like something else to happen? Wouldn't you like something that, that, that breaks the mold, that no matter how crappy life sometimes gets, that's not the last, that's not the end of the story? Wouldn't you like that in your life? Wouldn't you like to go through things like coronavirus and say, you know what, I have hope? Wouldn't you like to pray for something that, that's really important to you, and out of the blue, God just answers it, not because of anything that you did, 
but just because he's good. Wouldn't you like to believe in something bigger than yourself?